Welcome to Beyond Just Money by Kalkine Media, an independent global media house and investor relations group. Please note that this podcast is for information purposes only. It's not a solicitation or recommendation to buy, sell or hold the stocks of any company or companies or engage in any investment activity under discussion. Kalkine Media is neither licensed nor qualified to provide investment advice through this platform. Hello and welcome to Beyond Just Money with me, Santa. And today we will discuss and analyze the current crackdown of China on crypto mining industry. And to discuss this, we have the head of content of Calkine Media, Nidhi, with us. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Santa. That decision is sure to have a huge impact on the crypto market. Well, Nidhi, we have seen that China has intensified the crackdown on the crypto mining industry over the weekend renewing calls to national banks and private payment platforms such as Alipay not to offer their services to cryptocurrency exchanges and miners. So what are your views on this? Like I said, Samta, this is a big move. China accounts for a major share of the global crypto mining activities. So China's central bank, the People's Bank of China, has basically asked officials from the country's largest banks and the Ant Group company not to engage in crypto services. The government directive was conveyed to the Agriculture Bank of China, the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, the Postal Savings Bank of China and Alipay during a meeting with the representatives over the weekend. After the meeting, a central bank statement said that crypto transactions disrupt the financial order and raise the risk of criminal activities like money laundering and illegal cross-border money transfers. Following the order, prices of Bitcoin and other cryptos plunged on Monday. Bitcoin prices decreased by about 3.44% to 31,802 US dollars on June 22nd, which is Tuesday. Prices of Ethereum, on the other hand, went down by 6.82% to 1,879 US dollars roughly. Prices of other cryptos also fell, and these cryptos included XRP, which was down 16%, while Dogecoin was down about 26%. So yes, the move did have a major impact on the crypto market. But Nidhi, why is the move taken and why is China banning cryptocurrencies? Well, China wants to promote its own digital yuan and hence wants to ban the private digital currency market. Beijing also claims that crypto mining consumes large amounts of electricity, mainly from coal-based plants, which can jeopardize its emission goals. In May this year, China banned financial institutions and payment companies from offering crypto services and warned them against dubious crypto trading. The order made crypto trading and services illegal. Following this, many provinces in China have begun to shut down crypto mining activities altogether. However, the rule has not barred individuals from holding or trading in cryptos. Major crypto exchanges in the country, in fact, have said that they would stop selling mining machines and other services in mainland China. They also promised to suspend future contracts and products in China. So the major exchanges have basically said that they would follow the new orders. Beijing had flagged against crypto as early as 2017, if we go back and look at the past. China's central bank had urged several banks and payment firms to have a deep check on clients' account details and promptly cut the payment channels in case of any identification of crypto transactions. So coming back to what's happened now, China's central bank urged several banks and payment firms to have a deep check on clients' account details and promptly cut the payment channels in case of any identification of crypto transactions. These tightening measures would adversely impact crypto trading in China by putting all OTC platforms basically out of business. However, banks and payment companies would face challenges in identifying crypto-related transactions in particular. Earlier, when China banned crypto mining, it had affected major Bitcoin mining hubs such as Sichuan, Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia. So all in all, it remains to be seen whether the tightening of the crypto regulation in China will actually mitigate the financial risks and money laundering in the country. And with that, we come to the end of today's show. We hope our listeners are more informed now. Thank you, Samta, and I hope too that the listeners got the information that they were seeking. 
Absolutely, Nidhi. And on that note, to listen to this podcast again, please log on to our website, that is calcangmedia.com, or you could subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until we see you next with yet another insightful episode of Beyond Just Money, stay upright and invest right with Calcine. Our listeners are requested to make their own inquiries about any investments and Calkine Media strongly suggest that the listeners seek advice from a financial advisor, stockbroker or other professional as necessary. Calkine Media hereby disclaims any and all the liabilities to any listener arising from any use of the information shared or discussed in this podcast. This podcast is available for personal and non-commercial use only.